Welcome back to Harbo. Mitt Romney's obviously becoming under assault right now for his big business background, but it's not liberals championing the populist anti-Romney theme. It's Newt Gingrich and his fellow Republicans like Rick Perry. So why is the GOP taking a page from the Democratic playbook, you might say? And could they be permanently damaging the most credible candidate they have to take on President Obama? Chris Chocola is a former Republican congressman from Indiana who now runs the Club for Growth. And Andrew Ross Sirkin is the, of course, co-anchor of Squawk Box on CNBC and a columnist for the New York Times. He's also author of Too Big to Fail. Uh, this uh, phenomenon here, I wouldn't have expected it. I think it's a perfect storm. I think Newt Genrich is an opportunist. My assessment is that he saw this movie that was made, this documentary, basically trashing Mitt Romney's role as uh, head of Bain Capital. And he also has some money to pay for ads. He put it together and said, here's a way to stop Romney. What, you, what are you making of the fact that Newt's going after Bain Capital as a job destroyer and a job creator? Well, I think he is helping Obama. Uh, I don't think it's an unexpected attack. It's, I think, an unexpected source. And I disagree uh, with the substance of the attack greatly that Nigrich is, uh, is delivering. But in a weird way, he may be helping Romney a little bit. Uh, Romney knew this was going to come. It gives him a practice round in South Carolina where the uh, stakes may be a little bit lower in the sense that if he can't rebut these, practice his response in South Carolina in the general election, he would uh, have no chance of doing that. He's probably helping Obama, too, because Obama gets to sit back and watch Romney's response. And he gets to hone his attack based on how Romney uh, responds to, uh, to Gingrich. So I think it's the wrong attack coming from a Republican. I don't think it's a surprise on any business person running for office. They're all going to be accused of these things. And Romney gets to gets to have a, a practice round. Are there businesses does. out there that go out there to chop shop uh, companies that were founded by their uh, the person who founded the company? They chop them up like Gordon Gecko. They sell them in pieces, and or they reduce their efficiency to the point, or they pretend to cut their costs so much they end up destroying the company, but they make a killing. Isn't that doesn't that go on, or is that just a phantom notion? That well, there, there, are companies, there are equity companies that basically are vultures. There's bad behavior in every industry and in every profession uh, known to man. But over a long period of time, people who engage in the free market system, people that embrace economic freedom, can't succeed unless they create value. I'm not here to defend Bain Capital. Well, we see these people, specific. by the way, in these ads, as we've shown them tonight, who have lost their livelihoods because of Bain Capital. What do you make of those presentations? There are probably very ugly incidents that Bain Capital was involved in. But when you look are at the- Are they fair game for a political opponent to raise? Everything's fair game in politics. Okay, let's take a look at Chuck Todd. Here's an interview. Newt Gingrich defending his attacks on Bain Capital. Let's watch. There's a big difference between financial manipulation and capitalism. Capitalism is when entrepreneurs go out, investors go out, they start something real, they grow something, and it has real impact. And you don't feel like that's a class warfare argument? That is what some no, I think that's some, a, I think uh, sort that's, of Romney I, defenders here are saying. Well, from, I mean, first of all, okay, is he allowed to cite his record or not? If he's allowed to cite his record, is somebody else allowed to criticize his record or not? Criticizing one businessman for one set of practices is not an assault on capitalism. Well, Chris, I think that this is a preview to the whole election in the general election. This is going to be an election about do we believe in which candidate is better at um, communicating their experiences in life to the voters. President Obama believes in more and bigger government. If Romney is the nominee, he's going to believe in economic freedom. And, ec and this the isn't about economic freedom. It's about the performance right. Bain, of Bain Capital in job production or destruction. Let me go to Andrew Ross Sorkin. Andrew, if you had uh, reporting on this, right. is it hard to figure out what the net effect of Bain Capital was? Was it destructive or constructive for American jobs? You know, the, the hardest part now, covering this industry for the past decade or more, it is very difficult to, to actually ascertain whether it's destructive or, or, or constructive. Having said that, I think uh, Mr. Romney, uh, Governor Romney, has, has made job growth part of his platform. He has put out there that he has created, as he likes to say, more jobs than in the, pub, in the private sector than he says that President uh, Obama has, has created in the public sector. As a result of trying to take credit for that, he then has to answer for all of the jobs that were lost. That becomes the issue. We had we had Mitt Romney on the show this morning, and we talked about th this issue. Yeah. And and the the question becomes actually, does he deserve credit for either of them? Ultimately, I give him credit for starting Bain and being a good investor. But that's what he was. He was a good investor. Did he create all these jobs? I'm not so sure. Did he kill all these jobs? I'm not so sure either. Well, here he is, Gingrich, defending his attacks on Romney by saying the Republican nominee must be vetted before the Obama campaign has a chance to take him on. Let's watch. 
I am a middle class. My dad was an army officer. I grew up in middle class background. I have middle class values. Um, and uh, I think powerful rich people rigging games very distasteful. You think once you're done, once the super PAC is done, he's going to become less electable or viewed as less electable? I don't know, I, but I think the time to find out is right now. I mean, the last thing Republicans ought to do is nominate somebody who has not been thoroughly vetted and then sit there watching Obama and Axelrod destroy them. You know, he sounds like my dad, who was a, right. a cloth coat Republican, who voted Republican almost every election, but was very upset during the GE price fixing scandal years ago because he thought those guys were, were manipulating and abusing the capitalist freedom, a free enterprise freedom. Newt Gingrich makes a blue collar argument, not a blue collar, it's a cloth coat Republican argument. We believe in free enterprise. We don't like people who are basically bandits who use the system to basically make a lot of money but not create any wealth for the country. I mean, well, he knows what he's doing here politically. I well, this is a political play, and you asked if it was fair game, and I suppose it is. But it's not fair in the sense that you can't judge the free market system or one person's um, uh, um, career in that free market system by a very small slice of it. You can't take a few people, talk to them, say, do you like this guy or don't like this guy? Did this deal, did this deal not work? You have to look at the totality of their career. And again, I'm not here to defend Bain, but Bain is looked at as a respected uh, uh, company that has grown value for their investors, and their investors are people like teachers' pensions, firefighters' pensions, university endowments, okay. and some individual Let investors. me throw at you, it's great to have you on. Let me throw something at both of you guys. It seems to me what Romney did, and Newt's exploiting, is that Romney made a calculated decision. Don't run on his record as, as governor of Massachusetts, because there he was for health care. He was pro-choice. Don't talk about his public sector career, which is intended to help the general public, right. which would be a logical argument, Andrew. You pick up on this. So he picked his private sector career, which is not intended to help the general public, and bragged, oh, I created jobs there. That's when I was really a public servant when I was out making money. Right, and, and I think that's the hardest part to, to justify on, on either end. The, the question, though, to me that, and it's the issue that you raised at the very beginning of the segment, is does this, the wind out of the sails of President Obama later on, are we going to be talking about this issue? If he is the presumptive nominee, are we going to be talking about this issue in the fall, or are we going to be over this issue? And does this punch land now, or will it, or will it land later? And Oddly enough, despite the, the, the sort of popular rhetoric around this issue, it doesn't feel like it's landing. I, you know, I, I've seen the movie now. I, I think it, it pulls at your heartstrings, but I don't know if it fundamentally lands with the American public and then again, more importantly, whether it can be exploited again come this fall. Good question. Thank you, uh, Chris Chicola. Thanks for joining us for the Club for Growth. And Andrew Ross Sorkin, a great reporter for the Thanks. Times. Up next, First Lady Michelle Obama pushes back.